any serious attempt at actually doing something about climate change has to address transportation, obviously. Every serious person knows that. Yet somehow, lots of serious people seem to have blind faith that electric vehicles are the magic bullet here that will save us without us having to do anything at all. The free hand of the market will do a sleight of hand trick and nobody need do anything. Whoopee! And yeah, electric cars are great. We should absolutely replace combustion cars with environmentally friendly EVs. That would dramatically help and definitely needs to happen for long-term sustainability. However, there is something that has to be acknowledged here, and it's the fact that the goal is a very long-term project. Much too long to help on any significant timetable with what we have to do to address climate change. 98% of cars sold, even in 2021, are still gas-powered cars. By current projections, by the year 2050, 30 years from now, EV sales will only likely be around 60% of all cars sold. Maybe there'll be a sea change, and that timetable will accelerate. Let's hope it does. But even if all cars sold tomorrow were 100% electric, the switch to a fully electric fleet would still be an extremely long-term project. There are about 280 million cars and trucks in the US. About 2 million of them are currently electric. Because cars last 12 years or so on average and sometimes can be driven 20 years or more before being replaced, Americans usually buy about 16 million new cars per year. So. To swap 278 million gas cars to electric, we would need new car sales to be 100% electric for 16 years or so. When you account for these two long-term timetables, that it will likely take 15 to 30 years to start replacing gas-powered cars with EVs in any appreciable quantity, and an equal amount of time to replace the gas-powered cars on the road once you start doing it, you're looking at a best case scenario of a fully electric US fleet by maybe 2050 or 2060, you know, best case. As if that's not bad enough, there's another huge problem everyone seems to be ignoring. And that's the fact that electric cars are massively overbuilt for the problem they're trying to solve. It's the proverbial killing a mosquito with a cannon. If you're trying to drive from New York to Philadelphia with a family of four, your dog, and 200 pounds of luggage, then sure, a 6,000 pound electric car might be a great option. But most of the time, a car, and that's any car, be it electric or gas, is used to transport a single person, and 99% or more of the size of the car is completely unnecessary. And this has a real impact on the other issues with EVs. You see, to propel that 6,000 pound Tesla around, for instance, the car requires a 1,200 pound battery. Think about that for a second. There are already huge environmental concerns about everyone having tons of electronics like an iPhone that require lithium ion batteries. And the battery of an iPhone is less than one tenth of a pound. That means the battery in this Tesla is the equivalent of 13,000 iPhones. This also massively drives up the price, of course, which is why a Tesla is still way out of the price range of many Americans, which obviously is going to slow adoption. Any way you cut it, an electric car is just simply way too much vehicle for the vast majority of trips. What if, instead, we eliminate all the unnecessary parts and wait and get the goal to be just moving people and cargo around? Thankfully, there are already electric vehicles available now that have done just that. And they're great. I'm speaking, of course, about electric scooters and e-bikes. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to think when they hear that. These are not proper vehicles. I don't want to ride them. These are toys, right? I mean, how would I pick up groceries or take the kid to school? What if it rains or snows? And these questions, which come up a lot when talking about personal electric vehicles, somewhat miss the point. 
All of these activities are, of course, possible. But the point is that micromobility solutions don't have to be the perfect solution for every single trip to still be extremely useful. Every mode of transportation exists for some types of trips, not all of them. We don't build train or plane infrastructure so you can take a plane to work and back, or car infrastructure so you can drive from North Carolina to Europe. The question is how many trips could realistically be taken on such a mode. And for micromobility, that number is extremely high. Almost all commutes to work, for instance, consist of transporting one person. And more than 60% of all trips are less than six miles. In cities, the average trip is less than three miles. All of these things are trivially easy for a person in almost any physical condition on a personal electric vehicle. And given PEVs cost a tiny fraction of an electric car, an absolutely enormous amount of currently combustion engine dependent trips could be replaced by environmentally friendly micromobility almost instantly. You'll hear lots of people say things like, but not everybody can ride a bike or scooter. And that's true. In the same way that not everybody can use stairs, but it doesn't stop us from building and using them ubiquitously. Some people will still have to drive though. The point isn't that everybody has to take an e-bike or scooter. It's that we should be trying to get as many people as possible on them for as many trips as possible. And people vastly underestimate how many people fall into the category of those that can and think it's maybe only 20 something year old daredevil athletes or something. This is largely, I think, because people are thinking of bikes, not electric bikes, and they don't realize the game has been completely changed. That you had to be fit and athletic and young might have been true 10 years ago with real regular leg powered bikes. But now if you can stand and walk on your own power and you're under the age of say 75 or 80, you can ride an e-bike or an e-scooter with virtually no effort. You might not want to, and that's fine, but you technically could, and again, hundreds of millions of people fall into this category. This is the electric vehicle technology people should be excited for, and our government should be rushing to incentivize with infrastructure and subsidies. Any serious person that wants to do something about climate change should be devoting all their effort to making micromobility more widespread. This is the technology with the potential to actually do something.